So, you know, one thing I've noticed is you can't really have a discuss discussion today about anything related to ad tech or measurement without acknowledging the state or the future state of identity in the industry. So as you know, data deprecation or the decline of the third party cookie and other device level identifiers like Apple's IDFA, it's a, it's a huge challenge because it underpins uh, pretty much all of how the ad tech ecosystem operates today. Uh, in particular with cross screen measurement, it's really essential for marketers to not only understand how each channel is performing, but even more importantly, like what are the synergies across channels and how is their campaign performing holistically? Uh, and to do that, marketers, they need to understand how the same consumer is being exposed to media across channels and across screens. And with data deprecation, the ability to do this becomes even more challenging because we're losing more signals in the form of device IDs every day. Uh, without data deprecation, there's still even challenges today with combining different data sets, for example, from digital and TV. And it's because of multiple factors um, like the, the quality of the data sources, the accuracy of device graphs, whether deterministic or probabilistic methods are being used. And even the level of granularity between data sets, for example, uh, digital is usually at the device level, whereas TV is at a household level. Now to, to combat these challenges, uh, the industry is looking at uh, alternatives to the cookie in the form of different solutions. So for example, like universal IDs, we've heard about uh, cohort-based solutions like Google Flock, probabilistic methods um, based on various signals. And I believe there'll be more dependencies on panels and first party data sets overall. Uh, also, you know, I think uh, what, even, what even further compounds these challenges is that uh, including measurement of walled gardens in a holistic way will only become more difficult because the marketer would ha will have to be ready to move their first party data into multiple environments that, you know, they, that don't talk to each other. Um, there are solutions currently being tested that make this process easier, uh, like clean rooms and secure computation approaches. But again, these solutions will require that the walled gardens participate. Marco, so could you tell us uh, about the role of Cantar in cross-screen measurement, sort of what, what, what you guys are doing and what the vision is over there? Yeah, um, so, you know, so what marketers tell us is they want data and insights to keep, to help them make smarter decisions about their media investments. So they need these data, these data and insights to remain competitive in a fragmented world. And so, you know, here at Cantar, we're challenging our clients to move beyond descriptive analytics, which is still important because it tells a marketer how effective their campaign was, but it's still backward looking. And we're moving our clients toward prescriptive analytics. So this is where, you know, is more, it's more forward looking um, because it tells a marketer exactly what to do to maximize their media investments. And it's really these prescriptive insights that will give marketers that competitive advantage they need. But I also think, I, I think it's also essential that these prescriptive insights are based on data that um, that takes into account more than just the media itself, because media is just one small piece of the puzzle when it comes to impacting campaign performance. So for example, you know, creative is one of the largest pieces to consider, right? A bad creative makes media work much harder, whereas a great creative, media doesn't need to work as hard. Uh, another example uh, is brand measures, which are equally important to consider especially when um, assessing something like incrementality, for example, because a large portion of a marketer's baseline sales is being driven by long-term brand equity. And a marketer not only needs to measure this, 
but they need to nurture and invest in their brand equity and do that in combination with continuing to drive short-term sales because both are important. Like both must, must be done uh, in a balanced way. And all of this will help the marketer grow the brand uh, in both a long-term and sustained way. And you know, just to circle back on the challenges for measurement, these type of prescriptive insights, they typically rely on uh, optimizing media levers like uh, budget allocation by site, uh, audience segments and frequency. So if the future of identity makes it more difficult to measure things like audience frequency, then this is another challenge the mac uh, marketer could face. I wanted to ask Marco about sort of the best use of data in planning AVOD investment. There's uh, quite a lot going on, quite a lot of opportunities. How is, uh, what's Cantar's view on, on planning using data around AVOD? Uh, yeah, so I, I kind of reviewed kind of where, where our stance is. We think that these type of prescriptive insights are where the market needs to go and where our clients need to go. And again, they're telling the marketer specific things that they need to do to optimize media going forward. And without that, it's, you know, it's difficult for that marketer to get that competitive advantage. So I think you know, the more we can leverage these big data sets, because it's only really in the recent five to 10 years that we've had the ability to process uh, and compute um, all of these large data sets in, in a way that we can come up with these prescriptive insights. And I, I think that's really where the future is headed. In terms of the notion of a wall garden, uh, you know, which traditionally has meant uh, Facebook and Google and uh, Amazon, of course, what about the new AVODs and other streaming services becoming either wall gardens, becoming interoperable? What challenges are they presenting uh, to you as a data company? Yeah, I mean, when we think of AVOD, uh, in many respects, we're comparing it to linear TV uh, and really contrasting it from there. As far as how a marketer would leverage those various channels um, and the, the big question that comes up is just around how to deliver reach. Um, you know, are, can you get the same type of reach on these AVOD uh, channels? And I think, you know, that's, that's changing, right? So traditionally, when you think of, you know, the type of reach you would get with linear TV, at this point, you have a few players, uh, for example, Hulu and Roku. Um, and then you have some of the mid-tier AVOD uh, companies, for example, like Tubi. And there's a lot of value um, that advertisers have in combining some of their linear TV, TV buys with these, with these AVOD buys, because um, the audiences that are using AVOD, these are new and different audiences, and they, there's very little duplication with TV. There's also things like you know, longer viewing time. So the audiences might be a bit smaller than lin linear currently, but um, these people are spending a lot more, there's a lot more binge kind of behavior happening on these channels. It's obviously a different demographic that you're not gonna get from TV. If they over index in younger demos. And if you've seen the Nielsen ratings, it's very interesting because they show you the overall rating. And then in parentheses, you have the 18 to 49, and there's a huge gap between the regular ratings and you know, that, that younger demographic. So in many cases, a marketer needs to target these AVOD channels to really get um, that, those type of you know, younger audiences. And then there's the whole concept of the original content that's really uh, propagating on these new channels that is, again, just continuing to drive these viewers over to them. 